Hi, my name is Rachel McLeod and I'm a licensed clinical social worker and emotional wellness coach. And today I'm going to be talking with you all about, let me get my stuff up here, one statement that will keep you stuck in anxiety, depression, and traumatic stress for a lifetime. And um, I, I want to talk about that because, you know, you all are smart enough to know that this is that most people will stay stuck. Um, most people will remain um, suffering and battling with symptoms of anxiety, depression, and traumatic stress. Um, some because, some of the reasons just because we're not there yet as a country to get all this stuff out, but some of it is because of this one statement that we're making. And, um, and I wanna talk about that today and really get down into the nitty gritty of this because I want you to be one of the people that never stay stuck. I want you to become one of the lights that get their healing and their transformation. You shine that light bright and you let everyone know that you do not have to live like this and you do not have to stay like this. And that's the mission I'm on is to liberate you and to liberate as many people as possible and to really empower us to be able to work with our brains powerfully so that at our breakfast tables we are doing this with our children and we are passing on powerful brain work for generations and we right here you and I are here leaving a powerful and creating a powerful legacy that we're going to pass on and that's going to change the world so big mission but we are unlimited this guy right here unlimited or this gal is unlimited right up here and um, and so that's really what the deal is and so that's what we're here for and uh, today what I've got going on for you is number one you know me and I have not yet figured out how to turn off my notifications so you might hear some some beeping around here in my world because I anyway sidetrack digressed okay so I'm gonna tell you what this um, this statement is and I'm gonna talk about it and then I'm gonna walk you through an intervention, not an intervention, a strategy um, to help you break free from this trap, this mental trap that is created by this one sentence. And I am going to have you hate this sentence so much that every time it comes up, you're challenging it. Um, you're challenging it. You're getting in its face, you're taking it down, you're not accepting that. You're not accepting that you're gonna be stuck in a box of okay mediocrity and not stepping into your whole life and being stuck in no man's land, no woman's land. No woman should be there in mediocre, mediocrity. You know, it not, not too down and not too up, right? And so that's what I'm here for. That's what we're gonna do today. Um, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about this and, um, and then I'm gonna walk you through, um, an inter like I said, the strategy. And so when we get there, I want you to take full responsibility for your participation. I want you're responsible for taking care of yourself. If at any time you feel like, okay, pause, you pause right there. Listen to yourself, respect yourself, right? Um, and so I want you to do that. Um, let's see. The other thing is that I'm going to ask you in this video to play full out, to give everything you got right now your full because this is your life we're talking about. We're not just talking about, oh, symptoms of anxiety, depression, traumatic stress. We're talking about a whole web of dysfunction that keeps you playing small, keeps you disconnected, keeps you trapped and not free. And this is your life. This, this right here is what you take with you and create your life with. And if it's not working well, your life isn't gonna work well. So I can't want this more for you than you do for yourself. I can, but don't go there. Like what's what's that about when somebody wants your emotional wellness more than you do, okay? And some of that's what we're gonna talk about here and I'm gonna help you wiggle that and get free of that so that you have the motivation you need to go ahead from here to the finish line and then be happy dancing in the end zone. I just combined several sports there. But you you understand what I'm talking about because that place over there in the end zone is where you will start dream life creation if and when you get through this, because you will have a brain that is ready to rock with that. And I know it's possible because I watch it. I help people do that all the time. This is what I do all day, every day. I grab hands. Will you take my hand? Yes. You grab hands and I walk them step by step through to the other side. And then I stand and cheer. And while I'm still moving too, right? Because I want to see what this thing will do. Um, so, um, so when I ask you to play full out, I want you to, I want you to have a pen and I want you to have a pencil 
and a paper. <laughs> I want you to have something to write with and a paper. And when you have that paper ready right now, I want you to say, I'm in. Okay, we're going to do this a little differently today. I'm going to start talking <laughs> and then, and I'm going to see you post, I'm in. And when we have that ready, then I will walk you through the exercise. Okay. And I want you to get in. I want you to know, um, you don't, I, 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 I'm on a mission to change the world. Um, there are many brothers and sisters with me and everyone is doing their own thing. Yes, Alicia, Alicia's in. Um, and you don't change the world by sitting on the sidelines. And the first world that I need to change, if I'm going to change the other world, is the one in here, right? All of this world in here, I need to master this. And I do a lot of stuff to do that. I have some standards. Um, I work with the best. I invest. Like I go all out. And when I find somebody that I want to go where they're going, I'm all in. I want you to know I did some really wild stuff at, at this conference I was just at. No shame because you know what? I'm going to get <laughs> my time, energy, and money's worth out of that. Because what I get out of that is what I will give my children. I will give my babies. I will give my life. So you don't have to tell me to play full out because homegirl is going to be play a full out. And if I'm not, I'm going to find somebody who will help me do so. Because my playing full out means healing to thousands. And who am I to sit and not play full out and not show up to create the transformation that needs to be made? First and foremost for myself, then for those babies I got that I love and adore that I want them to know that they're seen and they're loved and they're enjoyed. For me to see them, love them, enjoy them means that I got to not have a tornado inside. And that means I have to show up and play full out for myself. I have to go there and do that. Sometimes I have to do the uncomfortable and I'm ready to go. So I'm going to ask you play full out. I don't know what that means for you. You know what that means for you. Okay. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, okay, let's go. This is the sentence, the phrase that um, does not pay and the phrase that can keep you stuck in this for a lifetime. And that is, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Oh, girl, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Hmm. Okay, it's not that bad. Okay, 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 okay. It's not that bad. That's the one right there. That's it. And um, this is a tactic of, this is a survival strategy and it's a tactic to, um, it's called minimizing. And, um, and we're minimizing something really bad. Um, and we're doing it by just, let's throw some, the sentence on there. Uh, there are, there, we have used this for generations and, um, and you can tell and you can see it if you know what you're looking for. Um, this is also a numbing strategy, right? You find something that's really horrible, like, you know, you stub your toe or your elbow or you have a flashback or you have a panic attack. It's not that bad. It's okay. It's not that bad. The whole purpose there is to bring it down, to minimize it, stop and suppress, and to get away from it, to mentally separate so that you're not feeling the pain and the agony, right? And I understand why. And I'm not even throwing any stones because there's a reason why. And if you don't solve this reason why, you, you may stay there, right? But let's just talk about this because you got to see what this is doing to you. Um, the other thing is that this is a denial strategy. You're denying. The brain is excellent at this. Um, the, the brain doesn't create with limitations. It can create, it can, it can create stories from nowhere and everywhere and make you believe them. And denial is a really interesting one because um, people do this in their families for years. And this is how people know, like you can have family members that are abusing other family members and you just like, I don't even see it, right? Many of us have those family um, patterns when we weren't protected because of that. 
And we have this when we have parents and, and, you know, they're still stuck in their trauma and that we go talk to them about something that hurt our feelings and they deny it. And they really will spin the story and turn themselves into the hero, even though they're the ones victimizing. And brains are good at this. It can really create something that's seamless that you can't see out of. And if you don't know how to check it or how to work with it and how to find the cracks and poke your head through or like stick your spiritual sword in there, I don't know what we're doing in there. But if you don't know how to pierce it, it can really envelop you into all kinds of illusions. And so when you start saying it's not that bad, you're activating a system in your brain to create an illusion for you that it's actually not that bad. But that doesn't change the reality of the fact that it is actually very bad. And, um, and one of the problems with this is that um, it, th this will take you out of the pain and out of your heart. And it will put you right back up in your head. And what's so not great about that is that if you've got anxiety, depression, traumatic stress, this part is not working fabulous. It's ill. It has a mental illness. There's some stuff in there that's not functioning well. And so when you're, when you're looking at this, and if you've got these, these symptoms, right, this part isn't working well, your emotions are all haywire and your memories are flashing up, trying to get into through the healing pathways, into your prefrontal cortex, into your awareness, and they're busting into your awareness all the time. And then there's strategies to stay out of there, you know? And, um, and when we have these disorders, we really learn that the only part of us that we can trust is our conscious awareness. So we become hypervigilant. We got to pay attention to everything, you know, and we try to overthink. We think, 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 think. And then we start learning, 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 learning. And guess what? You cannot get out of this like that. You can't. You cannot think your way out of a mental illness. That's like what you're not going to do. You're not going to think yourself out of mental illness. It's not going to happen. Um, it, healing from a mental illness comes because there's integration of all the parts. That means you got to be able to integrate, bring this part into healthy alignment and function with your other parts. Part One of those is your heart. There's lots of other things, your body, right? So that's where you bring healing is integrating all of this stuff. Um, Dan Siegel, my man over there, interpersonal neurobiologist, he says to us as therapists, he says, you're not, you're not therapists, you're not counselors, you are integrationists. You are, your entire purpose is to integrate this and that and this and that and that past thing and this and integrate it and help the brain work with it. Integrate it. Because that's what's going on. When stuff hasn't been integrated yet, your brain's like, what are we supposed to do with it? I don't know. We haven't integrated it yet. There's all these problems. And so you can't focus on anything because your brain's focused on integration that it can't do and it's stuck. Okay, so, um, so, we, so we don't want to just stay up here in your head. We want to come into your heart. We want to come in there. We want to sit in there a little bit. Um, the heart knows. It doesn't, it, like the brain's function is to argue both sides and every side, all four of the sides. That's what, that's one of the reasons why it's really challenging, right? Because you've got, you can get five, six different perspectives and you just don't know which way to go, right? But when you get into the heart, the heart just knows things. And if you can pay attention in there, then you can bring one more system on and get more information than just this up here, okay? Um, and the other problem with that is that you walk past the pain. You just walk past it. Pain is there because it's saying, hey, 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 here's a problem. Your job as the like as the the CEO of your business, your life, is to solve your problems. Make good things happen and solve any problems. But you're walking past problems all the time. And your brain is creating illusions that it's not there, but it is. And everybody can see it. And you can too, but your 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 brain is filtering and creating. And, um, and so when you keep walking by problems, they grow, right? Nothing really stays the same here. Um, everything's either growing or releasing, growing or releasing. And so when you keep walking by problems, then you stay out of problem. I mean, you, you just, I, I'm having tech issues again, but I think I'm just going to keep talking because even though I can't see myself the last time I did this, um, I was still going. So that's going to really, we'll just see what happens. Um, let me know at any time if you don't see me, okay? Um, so, yeah, walking right past the pain. And so if you walk past it, you don't know where it is. You don't know how to fix it. You don't know how to solve it. 
you can't get a look at it. And so you can't fix it. And, um, and that's a problem, right? Because then other people are like, hey, you got a problem over there and you don't want to look at it, right? This causes lots of problems in your relationships. This causes lots of problems with your children, with your business, with your ability to function at work. You don't want to look at the problems. And you know what it's like to have somebody in your life like that? It's hard. And sometimes we can be that same way. And I'm not, I have the same brain function. This is something I also have to stay on top of. Um, Alicia Bell, can you see me? Can you put that in? Can you put that in? Um, oops. Cancel that. Um, can you put it in the chat? And I'm just going to keep talking and we'll, we'll just keep what's going on here. Um, Okay. And so the other piece of this, why these things are so challenging, why this, this piece is that you, you get your motivation for two, from two places. And one place that you get it from is the hell, right? The pain, the problem. That's where it's like, you know, we don't want to go down there, but let me tell you what, that's where some of the motivation is. And so, and then people tell me that they have no motivation. They can't get going. I know that's because they can't get into this that they've got, they've got programs set up to keep them out of the pain. Because once you touch that pain, you become activated and you become doing things. You, it's like, it's electrifying. Okay. And so, and, and so it's kind of a good and bad thing, this whole pain thing. Um, it's that double-edged sword, but really if you can get enough of it, you can really get moving forward. That's one of the things, the other place you get motivation from is from heaven. And one of the bad things about this, um, it's not that bad problem statement is that that means that the opposite is also true, that it's also not that good. And that means you can't get into the heaven. You can't imagine your life, um, your dream life. You can't imagine what it's like to be in the relationship of your dreams. You can't imagine what it's like to have your children and you connecting and working like a powerful team that just is radiating love to one another. And that's synergistic. You can't imagine what it's like to do your to do your dream life and your business, and you can't get up there. Every time you try to go up into the heaven, you get pushed back down by your subconscious programming. Because I would say because of this this one statement, it's not that good. Because you don't just get to suppress or minimize in one area; you minimize everywhere. You don't get to shut off one emotion; you shut off all emotions or turn turn them down a notch, right? And so it's just like that's those are two things that keep you stuck in this very narrow playing field when you're, when you're supposed to be unlimited, both up and down and all around, this is all yours, right? But in your life, you can only get this much because there's a ceiling and there's cement that's preventing you from everything. And let me tell you what, this is just the, came into my mind. So I'm going to speak it. Um, souls, I believe soul eats and it feeds off of emotion and soul doesn't care if it's good emotion or bad emotion it wants it all it wants to be in love with all parts of you it doesn't care it's like it, you want to go into the shame into the grief into the, the the hard whatever soul's like yes let's do it let's do that uh and it wants to go up and high yes let's do it let's do all of it and yet here it's not that bad it's not that good keeps you mentally in a place where you only get this much of it and so your soul kind of gets stagnant and it kind of just crusty and unsatisfied because this is not enough for your soul. It's just not, it's just not enough. Um, and so it needs that, it needs all of it to be able to thrive and to have life being pumped through it. And that's why many people tell me, I feel like I'm dying inside. They tell me, you know, I'm wasting my life. They say, I'm missing out. I can't step into my potential. I'm stuck. I'm trapped. I'm in a prison. Yes. This is exactly actually how it is. It's not a metaphor. It's actually a real thing. That's why I stand here doing this. And so, and, and one of the tricks is, is that the higher functioning you are on the outside, the stronger this is, the stronger that you hold yourself in this little plane. You, you don't want to go down because if you go down there, you can't, you can't function. You can't achieve at the level that you want to, but you can't go up either. That's why I talk with a lot of high performing people that have very little, they're, they're very controlled emotionally. They don't, they can't pull from that rich stuff and they have to keep themselves in a very narrow, very narrow place. 
you know, the less functional you are, right? I mean, you're just going up and down and up, not less functional, but like, like the, um, like the less, like you're, like if you're spending time in, in agony all the time, it's very hard to function in the external world. It's really hard to be in excruciating agony and be able to check the box. I have the house. I have this. I have that. It's hard to do that because the emotions are so consuming, which is why the other side doesn't go there at all. They're not programmed for that either. And so both of these are this opposite sides of the coin. Both of them are just are missing out on so much. One is missing out on function in their dream life. And the other one is missing, missing out on that rich, vibrant, emotional experience that's supposed to be life, right? And um, and so, and, and the other piece that, that's coming up here is that to get anywhere, like if you want to eliminate these symptoms, if you want to heal, you want to grow, you want to leave this emotional legacy for your family, you, the truth of the matter is when you want to go anywhere, like let's say that you are going on a trip, you need to know where you are on the map, that's the first thing you need to know. Where are you right now? And let me tell you, it is very hard to know where you are right now if you're talking about, it's not that bad. No, it's really not that bad. If you're talking about that, you have no idea where you are right now. And it's, that's intentional. That's, that's an intentional thing that your brain has done for you so that you could survive, right? But surviving and thriving are two different things. And surviving is that, that place where it's not that good and it's not that bad. And so, you know, so the deal is that it's important that you see this, it's not that bad for as horrible as that is. So that you can start looking around it. You can start looking under it and above it. See if you can see past it just for even a second, maybe for two seconds. Maybe this time you can see for three seconds. Or maybe you can hire somebody to say, hey, sit with me. Or maybe you get a relative, help me to be able to just look at how bad this is right now. Let me tell you what, you touch a little bit of that. Zzz, like, you know, if you have a toothache, you know, you're chilling, you're good, you know. But let that thing start hurting and zapping you. You're going to the dentist. You're going to take care of that. You're going to do whatever it takes. You're going to pull that tooth out by yourself. I'm referencing the Tom Hanks movie, right, right now. Anyway, but you see what I'm saying? The pain makes you take action, makes you do things. But what happens is when we tune that out, we actually are pushing our pain onto the people around us. We're letting them take it for us. We're letting them be frustrated because they can't connect, right? We're numbing out. And so it's not that bad, but it is bad for the people around us because we're just moving it out. And we're not being able to be flexible. We're not being able to be, connect deeply. We're not being able to be in our heart and really have a heart connection with people. That stuff, that's not just talk. That's a real thing. And so um, the, the deal is, is that if you want to get to another place, if you want to get into your dream life, you have to know exactly where you are right now, period. If you don't, you're not getting there. And as something I tell my clients all the time is you have to be exactly who you are right now if you're going to be the woman that you want to be. And that's a hard one because if you hate yourself, if you're scared of yourself, if you're, if you don't trust yourself, it's hard to sit right here. And that's a lot of the work we're doing in the beginning. And then there's movement, right? The more we can sit and be this part of who we are exactly right now, then we can go. But if you're going to pretend that you're this and you're not, if you're going to pretend this and that, you're not going anywhere and you're not going to get there. And you're surely not going to eliminate the symptoms of anxiety, depression, and traumatic stress that have you stuck right now and that have you living a dissatisfying experience and that have you disconnected with yourself first and then the rest of the world around you. And so I hear me when I tell you one of the things that's so important is that you know exactly where you are right now and set your intention to really get to know what that is. What does that even mean? Where am I right now? The more you focus on that, the more your brain will say, oh, that's what we're doing? Okay. It's just like a computer. It'll do what you tell it to do. Just like if you say it's not that bad, it's not that bad. It'll say, oh, it's not that bad. But if you say, where am I right now exactly? It says, oh, okay. And then it will start to really bring that into your awareness. Um, this, um, this, this, it's not that bad 
is in direct opposition to you knowing exactly where you are right now. As a matter of fact, it's a reroute. It's like an automatic reroute. It's like you might be going into pain and then it's like, oh, it's not that bad. And it will take you and direct you somewhere else. That's what it does. And I don't know how I would have survived without this function. And I also know that if I had kept it there, I wouldn't be here. You know, so this is, this is, this is humaning. This is not because you're bad or you did something wrong. No, this is just like welcome and uh, it's your turn to learn how to overcome this so that you can take your life to the next level. Simple, okay? So let's take that shame off. You haven't done anything wrong. You're just learning how to harness all of this. And yes, it's still that bad, right? And there is some good stuff in there. And that's really the deal. It's sometimes we go back and forth and back and forth, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when you're looking for motivation to change and when you want to make a whole life transformation, it's time to go into the other, right? And when we take off the shame to keep looking down deep, we can keep looking. Um, okay, so uh, you all are smart enough, like I said earlier, to know that everyone wants to eliminate their symptoms. No one wants to live like this. So why are we still struggling decade after decade after decade? And um, I'm writing, I'm, I'm looking at my notes because this is such an emotional thing that I, I really I had to stay here. And, um, you know, everybody wants that. And yet we know that most people will stay stuck, like I said earlier. And I hate that. And I'm bringing it back to that. And I'm like, if you're anything like me, you're like, ah, don't say that anymore. But let's look at the truth. The truth is most people will stay stuck. Unless we do something, right? Unless we change. Unless this whole thing transforms. And, um, and, and largely they stay stuck because it's not that bad. Start noticing how often your friends say that to you. And if they don't say that direct thing, watch their language and notice all the minimizing that comes out towards you. It's like the American way. And it's 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 seen as good manners. You know, somebody's not going to say, oh, my gosh, homegirl, your uh, your inner world's on fire. Um, like those friends are hard to find. And if you've got those friends around you, congratulations. Um, you are in a lot safer place with with those kind of friends because it's hard to tell the truth. It's hard to feel like you're making somebody feel pain and it's especially hard to make yourself you feel like you're make, you're feeling pain and then the other thing is that there are solutions and everybody wants a solution to this you know but but many people won't do what it takes to get the solution or if they did get it they wouldn't really implement it and some people are in the middle and they're just going to hodgepodge around or they're going to try a little bit of this and a little bit of that and hope it works. You know, and the largely a lot of that is because it's not that bad. We don't need full out heart surgery over this. We don't need a surgeon. It's, it's really, it's not that bad. I'll just throw a little bit of this and a little bit of that on it. It's not that, it's not that bad. Except for you've been doing that for decades. Like literally, if you're in your 40s now, 30s, decades. You've been doing this for decades. And I, I've been there, been there. And I'm not saying you're not doing anything because you are. <laughs> There's a lot you're doing. But to eliminate your symptoms, that's a whole different thing. It's a whole different thing. We're not doing that by talking about them. We help the brain heal with that. And so, you know, and so... <sighs> You know, and, and that's the deal is that that not many people are really going to take the exact action they need to fully eliminate this symptom. And largely, like I just said, it's because it's not that bad. And so my question now is, what about you? Where are you going to be with all of this? Are you going to be one that decides to see the truth and get to the bottom of where you are right now so that you can really break free? Or are you going to be one of the ones that stay in it's not that bad, Bill? And I have no stones to throw to you. You can stay there. I want you to know I'm coming for you. I am never giving up. I'll, I'll, you'll check me out 10 years from now <laughs> talking about the same thing. Uh, and, you know, if we want to do that, then you want to jump on it, then you can. But you have a choice. 
you have a choice and you don't have to continue to suffer. So, okay. So we're going to, let me see, make sure I got all my things done. Yeah. So, and, and that's, and the other piece of that is that, that, um, it's not that bad. It's like keeping on rose colored glasses that just don't see pain or problem, you know? Yeah. So, and if you don't see them, how are you going to solve them? And then they pile up and then they just keep coming at you. I mean, yeah. So this is my invitation to you. Um, I am inviting you to do uh, this exercise with me and it's time for your pen and your paper and I see that you're in. If anybody else has joined us and you want to say I'm in and just playful out, I invite you just to go ahead and post that. That lets me know your level of commitment to yourself and just puts it out there, you know? Uh, and I think that's beautiful because it just, we're, we, we're, we're all together in this. We're not alone. We don't have to sit in our houses alone suffering with this. There's so many of us that are amazing and brilliant and phenomenal and wonderful and have so much capacity for love that suffer with this, you know? And so go ahead and join us, say I'm in. And, um, and so, and I really want you as we do this, take full responsibility of your own well being, and, um, get your pen and your paper out. And I am going to ask you some questions and this is a very simple exercise and I'm going to get some water. You're getting your paper. I'm getting my water. Okay. Yay. Awesome. So good, Margaret. Let's do this. Okay. This whole thing is, is about seeing where you are right now. And, um, when you ask the brain a, a, a question, the brain is like one of those Jack Russell Terriers. I don't know if you've ever gotten to experience one of them, but it, with them, you throw the ball, they have to get it. They just have to, like, it's their natural instinct. Our brains are the same way. When you throw it a question, it has to go. Um, if it's, you know, anyway, so, uh, this, this is to take you in there. Um, and so you can, it's very simple. You can do this anytime you like, you can, you can flip it to the opposite. What's so, what's so good about that? You know, you can take it up into the heaven and I encourage you to do that today. We're doing, we're going down. Um, okay. So here we go. Okay. So my, this is what I, I I'm going to have you do. I want to have you, I'm going to ask you a question and I want you just to freestyle and I want you to take notes for your brain and I want you to take notes for your heart. I want you to take notes for your subconscious mind. Your job is not to judge it, question it, challenge it, nothing. Just be the secretary and, and write down the notes. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a question and I want you to get going with it. Okay. So I want you to look through your life for a second here and just take note of what is so bad about your anxiety, depression, or traumatic stress. And go ahead and write that down. Okay. Now what I want you to do is I want you just to be aware of that. And I want you, I'm going to ask you again about what you just wrote down. What's so bad about that? And go ahead and look at that. And as your brain starts to give you answers, go ahead and write that down. Okay. And whatever's next, whatever you, that just came up, I want you to look at that and I'm going to ask you, what's so bad about that for you? What's the worst part of that? And go ahead and take notes and write that down.
at this point, we're probably getting into more under the surface stuff and you might notice emotions starting to come up. It might start in your body first. Go ahead and write that down. Notice what you're feeling in your body. Are, are you feeling tension in your chest, in your shoulders, a lump in your throat? Um, do you feel a little bit more restless? Just take notice of what's going on. Just write that down. Okay. And now, as you're looking at that, we're three levels in, layers in. And I want you to look at this third layer. I'm going to ask you again, what's so bad about that for you? And I invite you just to let as much honesty out as you possibly can. And take notes for yourself. Take notes for your heart. Take notes for your mind. Take notes for your body. All right, and right now I'm going to have you, we could do this three more levels. Uh, we can keep asking this and go, we could take it all the way in there deep. And, um, but usually by level four, it's pretty, it's pretty thick. And I want you to write down, I want you to tune into your body and your mind and, uh, and your emotional state. And I want you to let me know how intense that is for you. And I want you to write that down on your paper on a scale of 0 to 10, 10 being absolute agony, maximum distress, and 0 being I'm good. And there's no right or wrong answer. You can go ahead and post that in the comments. That will really help me to see what we should do. If you're at a 4 or lower, then I invite you right now to go ahead and ask the question again, what's so bad about that? Because the intensity level is not so high that you can't look around at the deeper layers, right? I mean, when you get under the hood and look under there, it's like that's really when you can get more clarity. And if you're already at a 10 or a 9 or an 8, hopefully we're staying around the 8 zone, but I know it can shoot up really fast. This is why we don't go here because it is so painful. And um, and let's look a little bit deeper here and get a little bit more clarity for you. Okay. And my question for you will shift it will shift into your head a little bit here, but it's also in your heart as well. And I this is one of my favorite questions. And so, what's the real reason? that you're still saying it's not that bad when you look at this. And I want you to go ahead and take notes for yourself and just be honest. Tell on yourself. Tell on yourself on this paper. Pull that stuff in there. You know, there's, there's, a, you know, there's a saying that the truth will set you free, and it's so true. Why are you still telling the story? It's not that bad. Okay, and my next question for you is, what's the real reason you haven't fixed this problem already? What is that for you? And just hear yourself, hear your mind, your subconscious, your body, your emotions. Why haven't you solved this problem already? And I wrote down several of them because I've heard a lot of these things. So I've asked this question a lot because this is the one. This is this is this is usually the obstacle to overcome. Whatever comes up from here is the one is the one. Um, is it because you don't know how to solve this problem? 
Is it that you don't want to put in the required effort? I got no stones for you. We don't need to have stones. We just need the truth. There's no wrong answer here. Is it that you're afraid to fail again? Is it that you don't have enough support? We'll see. Is it, is the real reason you haven't fixed these problems already, is it, is it because that if you got better, it would mean the end of one of your important relationships? That's a real thing. It's a very real thing. Sometimes we're afraid that when we, when we heal and we rise, that the people around us aren't going to come with us. And it's scary. It's not always true, but it's, it's, it's a really scary thing. And it can keep us saying it's not that bad. Is it just too scary? Is the real reason that you haven't fixed this because you're just too comfortable? You just, you're just comfortable right there. Or is it something else? What is it? Okay. And as you are looking at that, the truth, the real reason. I want you to drop into your heart again, and I want you to listen for the answer because your head's loud. I mean, the, the neural pathways there strongly connected, okay? I'm trying to give your heart an opportunity to come to the party um, and have a little bit of time to participate and communicate. So let's drop into your heart here and listen for the answer to this question. Are you willing to let that real reason keep you stuck? right here with these problems. And again, there's no wrong answer here. It's just about truth. And I want you to write down whatever comes up because the truth of the matter is, is that as soon as we're finished, your subconscious programming is going to kick right back on and it will start creating the illusion that is it's accustomed to creating for you, right? Um, but if you write this down, you'll have it. It'll be easier to reference it. It'll be easier to look at it. And then you can come to the next place where you can make decisions about it. Because let me tell you what, the, if you keep looking at this, you're gonna make some decisions. Either you're gonna make a decision to go back into ne not denial, or you're gonna make a decision to transform this problem, right? And I want you to watch yourself in either direction. Because this is about learning about yourself. It's about mastering who you are, self-mastery, learning about your inner world. If, if it's in the cards, if it's in your cards, you write the cards, right? If it's in your cards to go back into denial for a while, watch that process happen. Watch how it comes to grab you and pull you back in. Just be curious. Why is that happening? What? If you're in there and, and you're seeing this stuff and you're like, that is it, watch that too and start and let it flow. Follow your intuition. Start writing about it. Start planning for it. Start taking action. So my question for you now is, do you stay stuck? Or do you do whatever it takes to get to your dream life? And this, this is only an answer, something that you can ask, answer, you know? Um, I get on the call with people and sometimes they say, oh, I need to talk to my husband, you know, hold up. Are you saying that they might think that it's not okay for you to change or heal? Like who has to get permission from anyone? And I think talking to your husband is wonderful, right? Talking to your mom is wonderful. Talking to your best friend is wonderful. But if you, if you let them decide for you, you're handing your power over. And that's part of trauma, right? So if you're doing that, watch yourself do it. And I've called it out for you so you can see it plainly. If you're going and looking for permission, somebody's permission, whether or not you heal and, and which path you're going to take, who? let me tell you, number two, never take advice from somebody who has not done the dang thing. And I mean that for anywhere. Like, please don't come ask me to look at your car. I can't help you with that. 
and especially like, and, and please ignore me if I one day think I do know, and I want to tell you how to fix your car, please. Right. And so the people around you love you, they care for you, but they're part of your system like that. And they're not experts in this. So if you're going to do this, you're going to do this because it's somewhere in there and you decide to do what it takes. You decide to take full responsibility for your emotional wellness and creating wellness because of your commitment here to your commitment to yourself. And we know that if, if you're suffering, there's other people around you suffering. And sometimes, especially if you're a mama, but if anybody else, it's like sometimes you look around and you put your foot down because I will not take anyone else down with me. I get that. But that comes here. There's something in there that's moving. So don't hand your power to somebody else to make this decision for you. Uh, everybody just thinks I'm trying all the things and I just keep trying all the things. Yeah, that's exactly what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to try all the things. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. If you're not trying all the things, you have to get to a place where you're trying all the things and you you might fail again. So what? It, we know that you're going to fail if you stay here. You're going to fail on so many levels if you stay right here. So. So what I want you to do. I want you to do something with this paper that you've done. I want you to do something with it. I want you to, you know, I, I post it in your bathroom. Don't take it down until you've just, until you've taken three action steps for healing, until you've got enough momentum that you know you're not going backwards. Just look at that thing. Keep it in your wallet. Keep it in your purse. Keep it in your journal. Look at that paper as many times as you can until you have taken the steps you need to take to get out of there. And if you start to slide backwards, go look at that again. Look at where you look at where you've been. And never buy that belief it's not that bad. It is. And if it's that bad, it can be that good. So if we get down there, we can we can access the top part too, the heaven. Right? And so um, what I want to do right now is I want to take any questions that you have. And I also, you know, uh, my challenge is to get into action here. And, and if you're, if you're feeling like you want to see if I can help you eliminate your symptoms of anxiety, depression, and traumatic stress in two to six months, like I have helped countless others. If you want to see if I can do that for you, go ahead and grab a spot on my calendar by going to rachelmccloud.com forward slash call and we'll have a talk. And we'll see if this is the right fit for you. Um, let me get my. So I'll go ahead and put that there. I want you to go ahead and answer any questions that you have. Okay. And I want to say a couple other things just to prepare you um, to, to really get the biggest victory out of this. And, um, and what I also will tell you is that I talk more about how to, the how of how to eliminate these symptoms in the webinar that I have posted in the, in the, um, in the, com, the title of this um, live, right? So you can go ahead and watch that webinar. I encourage you to do that because I'm talking about the how. It's one thing, because that's one of the real reasons most people don't get this is because they really don't know how to do it. They don't know where to start, right? I mean, it's a whole thing. I didn't know where to start either. Um, and so that's, that's in there and, um, you can get more information, but it, really, if your heart is saying, Hey, let's do this, let's do this. So book a call with me if you're ready for transformation and you want to see if I can help you with that, if I'm part of your journey. Um, and the second thing I would have you do step two is watch that, watch that webinar, that master class. Um, and if you're not at a place where you want to eliminate these symptoms right now, or you're not feeling my vibe for whatever reason, <laughs> um, watch the video, w watch that master class because you're going to learn so much about how the brain heals and what your next steps are. You're going to know, you're going to, you're going to, I want your path to healing to be as short as absolutely possible. Everything I do is about that. And so, um, so watch that webinar, take the time, watch it and, and let it inform the next steps that you take. Okay. Because yeah, I've talked to people who have been doing therapy for 17 years, right? 
And if you're, you're going to the wrong kind of mechanic, you're not going to get the result that you want. If they're fixing your tires and you need your, your electrical stuff worked on, you're going to stay with the same problem. And that doesn't mean that they're not good with tires. They are good with tires, but that's not the right issue. And when you understand why your brain is creating symptoms of anxiety, depression, and traumatic stress, and how to work with it specifically, you're going to know what you're looking for, and you're going to be able to take the right actions and get out of this quickly. Brains heal this stuff phenomenally well. Okay? So, so there's that. Um, the other thing is questions. What questions do you have for me? Okay, wait, before I do that, um, going here and looking at um, all of this stuff, the what's so bad about that, it can really, like, you can really feel alignment, right? And you can be like, this must end. That's a really good place to be, and there's not a ton of suffering that comes with that. And if you've clicked into that mode, awesome, go. Take those two steps that I talked about, book that call, and go ahead and watch that webinar, Okay. Um, sometimes when you go down in your inner world, oh, and let me talk about that. Okay, hold up. We're back at the like part where you're like in alignment and you're like go mode. Take action now because the brain will set up to take you back to, because it, that's its job is to keep you where you're at. It's his whole job. And so if you're, if you're in a place where you're, you know, we just open things up, but your brain doesn't like that. It wants to go back. And so by taking action now, that will move you into action and keep you going. And you can get as far on that momentum as you can get. Do that, okay? Now, other, others of you might be in here and you might be crying right now. And I would tell you, and this is what I tell all my clients, that ugly crying is welcome here. It's welcome. It's the, it's the, op, it's the, it's the healing mechanism that comes with your operating system. It's just, it's an automatic go-to. And if you're crying, hold space and cry. It is a huge release. You are moving all kinds of emotion through the healing pathways. Good, go with it. And let me tell you, emotion never stays if it can move through. And so crying helps it move through. And so eventually the, that emotion will run its course and it will actually get to the, the right part of your brain and you'll start watching lots of healing and growth happen. The thing is crying, you can't, that's not the intervention you want to rely on because there's a lot of work to do and you don't want to spend the next year crying and you're not going to be able to. So if you're in a state right now where you're crying, take care of yourself, self-soothing. You know, I have had clients that have all kinds of um, soothing, um, self-soothing practices that they're embarrassed of, like sucking their thumbs, rocking, sitting in a closet, burying themselves under uh, um, a, a closet. You know, those, that's, you're you, working with your neurological system. There is nothing wrong with that. I commend you for finding something that works. And you know what? As you keep healing, other ways of soothing yourself will turn on. You're supposed to have a whole system of soothing, self-soothing not just one way, not just two ways. You might find yourself eating a little bit more tonight because eating is soothing, it's self-soothing, right? Please don't hate yourself for that, right? It's just how brains do things. And your brain, it knows that, that you're gonna be okay if you're eating, right? So you're sending a lot of powerful messages to your brain just by the act of eating. So please don't, um, please don't do that. Don't harm yourself emotionally with shame let your body, your body will tell you so much. You know, um, Margaret says she's not crying, but she's biting her nails. Absolutely. Self-soothing. That emotion has to go somewhere. We just tapped into it and activated some of it and it has to do something. And if you're rocking or you're holding, you know, or, you know, you might find yourself clenching and unclenching. You know, I sometimes find myself in, um, I'm pacing bilateral stimulation. It's a type of EMDR, right? Um, so, uh, there's all kinds of ways we intuitively know how to work with our brain. It's just that right, we don't want to pace ourselves through uh, an anxiety disorder or trauma disorder. It's a lot of pacing and it's slower than the other things. So, um, so, but just be gentle with yourself. You have done something against how your brain is set up, right? And so be easy there and self-soothe. Do what you got to do. Have a warm bath. Um, have a bowl of ice cream. You know, if you get on the jump of it and you do it intentionally, the chances are you don't have to lose control over it. Because you're also, if you're doing it intentionally with awareness, you're also, what you're doing is you are acknowledging it. Brains love that, just like people love that. Like, I love to be acknowledged. 
Brains love to be acknowledged. And if you're saying, hey, I know you've had a tough time, let's go have a bowl of ice cream. Your brain is like, oh, you see me, you know? Okay, let's go have that bowl of ice cream, you know? And you get to be with it instead of doing it mindlessly, right? Because you know you're doing this because you're hurt. And let me tell you what, those functions, they can be there, but that also means let's get this resolved as soon as possible so that you don't have to rely on that one method anymore because we're never supposed to rely on one method. We're not supposed to rely on one word. We're not supposed to rely on one number. We're not supposed to rely on, I mean, if we did that, how limited would our life be? No wonder there's dysfunction. If you only have one way of soothing yourself, you got problems. And let's not be upset or mad about that. Let's just solve the problem. Let's get more. Let's get more. Let's hook up more of your brain. Let's hook up more self-soothing symptoms, like systems. Let's hook up those those pathways so that you can soothe yourself in so many other ways and ways that are faster and quicker and that actually help the brain heal itself. Okay, so um, I'm not seeing any questions. So perhaps this is where we, we end tonight. Let me make sure I didn't write anything else. Um, yeah, so, you know, I encourage you to use this exercise as much as you want, as much as you need to, as much as you see fit. Um, be easy with yourself. And let me tell you what, it's not so important that you do this exercise a lot. It's not, I, I would not encourage you to do it a lot, but if you need to get from A to B, do this. My intention for this was that you could not live in denial, right? Now take action, get the heck out of there. Go get the help you need, get the support you need, get the expert on your team. Get out of this and get free. And let's, let's do that whole light thing. Let's do that whole rich life experience thing. Let's do that growth, that expansion. Let's, 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 let's be the good in the world we want to see. And let's shine that light of healing, like healed people, heal people. Like, let's do that. Okay. So that's all for me. Um, if I'm going to keep watching this, go ahead and post anything that's coming up for you. And um, I look forward to our, to our next connection. Okay. Take good care of yourself between now and then. And um, feel free to switch this and look into the heaven. If you want to do that now, do that now. See how amazing it will be. Okay. Um, and I will see you another time. Good night.